Well, welcome to The Uncommon Truth. Everyone listening and watching, we're on video on YouTube and we're live in podcast land. Not live while we're recording. We're alive to ourselves. We're alive. We're, Though Steve we're looks like standing. he may not be alive today. If <laughs> he you, looks a little tired. If you want to show show your... Steve had a little bit of a mishap. You can <laughs> look at, look at his finger off. on video. He's not going to show us, but... Do you want to tell anybody what happened or just, I just cut make up finger. a story? I cut my finger horribly bad. It was hanging. The, the part of the finger was hanging off. Just be yeah. just above the first knuckle in um, the middle but finger. But aren't we lucky to live, blessed to live in a day when they can sew them back on? Sew it up. And you're still going. You didn't take a day off. I'm still yeah. standing. standing. Even after all these years? All these years. Was. Okay. Look at, like a true survivor. L- looking like a little kid? Like a little looking kid. Like a okay. little kid. Yeah. That's great. I'm still standing. A lot of people yeah, would take the day yeah, off. Yeah, oh, no, day. no. He was. Uh, oh, no. No, he got a soda on and met with uh, Derek at 11 o'clock. I was shocked at how many people were surprised I didn't take the day off. It's yeah. like, what's wrong with you people? It's a finger. <laughs> it's a finger. He has nine others. I got a whole raft here. He's a got whole extra. He got extras, don't you? Okay. Ya? Well, it's a finger. You'll fit in where Shrey and I came from. I don't think I, oh, boy. I had a whole lot of handshakes with uncles and, and cousins that were all the fingers there really so. they, they donated some to the farm equipment <laughs> yeah it's usually combines and oh stuff, boy that's yeah. awkward hello everyone in morwina who we love you high four yep. um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> boy, that's terrible <laughs> oh my goodness oh my gosh anyway. they're gonna dis- disinherit you what's it called dis- there are a lot of people listening in manitoba so hey manitoba at least hey then, manitoba then the we'll, rhymer family yeah rhymers Plets, lowens Lowen's. Lowen's. Yeah. we mm-hmm. like that's we all love you all we like morwina we miss you guys up there and uh, yeah, we do love more. We know we even got a Cornelson down here. So if you're a Cornelson, Cornelson, is that how you say Cornelson? Cornelson. If you're a Cornelson, say hi to you too. I would, call, I would call him Cornelson. Cornelson. Yeah, or just Corny. That's Corny. The, that's the California way. So Cornelson. he's in California. Okay. Yeah. Kevin Cornelson. Hey, and, Kevin. Uh, when in got, Oroville, you do as the Orvillians do. Orvillians. 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 Yeah, yeah, Orvites. Right. It was they were just Orvillians before you guys got here. <laughs> now they're, they're or- Orvites. <laughs> or- we we added a little class to the little name. class, okay. very little. Good. All right, Vicky, what's new with you? Anything? Wow, you you threw me off. Um, <laughs> yeah, what's new? No one you? ever asks about me. I don't know what to say. It's like no, just kidding. Um, what's other than um, quarantine city? Uh, no, nothing's really new with me. Okay. I'm just glad to be alive. Good. Is that good? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. That's Happy great. to be here with you. Still standing. Should I keep going? I mean, just you keep can interrupting if you. Want. you? <laughs> I heard a Toto song today. <laughs> no. Which which Toto song did you hear? Africa. Oh no. Oh yeah. I bless the rains. Yeah. Yeah. Which has nothing to do night. with the rest of the song. That's right. Man, we could get yeah. into that, and maybe for another podcast, another I pod- can go into Out- outtakes. That that album or that song was supposed to be left off that album. My friend Erica told me. Wow. It wasn't even Erica, good enough we, to be. Shout on. out to you, Erica from Manitoba. Slaco. Well. Slayco, I call her Sledgeco. Sledgeco. But, yeah. But is she another Manitoban? She is a Manitoban. That's yes. right. We have a bunch, don't I'm we? I'm not going to say we who do. she, her boyfriend is. Me neither. That's okay. Well, uh, Let's wait and see if it works yet before we start a note. We may, may not say it's lukewarm. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be getting into see if that. It takes. They're, uh, they're laughing. They, they don't realize how the camera works. They're pointing at our, our camera. lovely Lovely uh, podcast assistant here, Luke. Luke Warm. And, um, that's his last name. I don't think that's his last Luke name. Luke Warm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think he probably <laughs> takes some issue with that. But that's actually, <laughs> you're saying that because we had just talked about what we're going Correct. to talk about. And it's really cool for all of the people listening. Just a, a little behind the scenes snapshot. It's not like I email these topics to you guys a couple of days before or a week before. This is actually just stuff that's already on your mind, already on your heart. And and I already know that. So I just say, hey, this is what we're talking about today. And I, I remember this story you told, wow. you know, uh, like three months ago. Can we get into that? And I remember this topic wow. you covered in the class. Can we get into that? Yeah. And and Steve usually <laughs> takes about two minutes. And most of that's to just grab a drink of water or something. And he's like, all right, let's, let's go. And so that's what we're doing today. And we're going to be talking about what what a christian life is supposed to look like are we supposed to actually look like salt and light and if so what does that even mean like that's kind of different speech than we're used to and and we're going to get into probably go down the road of 
the opposite of that, which probably includes lukewarm, which is not Luke's last name. No, it's Pollock. <laughs> right. So thanks. Thanks, He's Luke, for helping Luke, us out. Warm, we're lukewarm. we're sorry to throw you under the bus, but <laughs> it's them, not me. He is single. No, well, look at well, him skating now from under this. <laughs> so not really. we're going to get to we're going to get to that. So it, last few weeks, we were talking about some pretty intense things. We we had a pretty nice discussion about intimacy and how you said something like intimacy takes work, oh, that was right? Good. Which is like work, mind blowing, works, yeah. I think, for a lot of people that it actually takes work having an intimate relationship with God. And then we talked about looking like Jesus and looking like Jesus is actually completely different than looking like anything else. Like Jesus is a unique person in history and and it was so so different to look like Jesus. And we talked about sacrifice and forgiveness, which are like, man, we're not letting anybody off the hook with these topics. They're, They're tough, just really tough, tough, tough right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so today we're going to be talking about what is it, what does our faith look like about being different than the world, or or sometimes we actually come slide back into being like the world, right? And and when Jesus says, "I want you to be the salt, salt of the world," or the salt of the earth and the light of the world, right? Know. In Matthew 5. And and then he he goes on to say, like, what salt is for and what happens when salt loses its saltiness and, and what do you do with a light? Do you put it on a hill or do you put it under a basket? Do you put it under a bed? Um, so I kind of wanted to get your guys' sense of what is it like right now and are these things are these things really happening around us? Is, is the church... is the church doing its job are we doing our jobs as individuals to to really look like jesus so um doesn't seem to be that christians all look that different from our neighbors what do you guys think well in terms of salt and light we're in the perfect time frame right now for that to be made evident Mm. it reveals itself so the government says you all need to stay home you know, shelter in place, shut down schools, shut down sports, shut down jobs. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really crazy. And so this must be one phenomenally dangerous disease or there's some phenomenal fishy stuff going on. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Either way, the foundation of people's lives is shaken. It's just absolutely moving under their feet. Yeah. So either people believe in this great conspiracy and they're angry and their foundation is all shook up and they don't know what the future is going to be, or people are literally, you know, taping their door door seams to make sure the disease doesn't sneak into their life, and they're just they're getting angrier and angrier as time goes on, and so their foundation is shook, and right now is the most perfect time for every Christian on the face of the earth, and yet. It's not necessarily what you're seeing. Mm. You're seeing a somewhat of a rebellion against uh, the government because we have rights. We have constitutional rights here in America. And there's fighting going on over that, you know. No agreement on whether we should be having services because they can't stop us kind of thing. And yeah. just this, this discussion is so saltless and so lightless, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Mm. Right now, we have the greatest opportunity to share of our firm foundation. How's that? Our Jesus on the rock, man. I mean, what's what's that big opportunity? To they're all shook. Oh, we have the opportunity. They are they're they're not walking around going, "I got this." They're they're kind of upset. Yeah, you're right. And so we have this opportunity to preach Jesus and tell them about the truth of a personal transforming event that we had in our lives that changed us the holy spirit we used to be this kind of a person and now we're this kind of person Mm. we were going this way and now we're going this way jesus said you are the salt of the earth salt is healing salt brings flavor the biggest thing we use it for today is flavor Mm -hmm. salt um it it uh preserves what's it uh when you clean with it sanitizes. Oh, sanitizes. It sanitizes. Yeah. You you rinse with salt in your mouth to to sanitize your mouth as well. Source too. It, it it's you know it's got a lot Preserves. of uses. Salt. Mm-hmm. It melts ice. Yep. Um, Preserves. 
It preserves. It was the only way to preserve for a long time. And Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. Wow. So we as Christians should be preserving and flavoring and healing and cleansing. Mm. And we're not really, uh, to the largest extent, in America alone, there's 110 million people professing to be Christians. And you take 110 million people cleansing, cleaning, healing, preserving, doing these things. And you've got quite a flavor that you've added to the face of your country. And you take any country, 30 million people country, and they've got so many million Christians. Yeah. If they would be salt, it would change the outcome of their world. If we would be salt, if we would concentrate on preservation and, and, and on flavor and on all the things the salt is, we change the world. But what Jesus said is if you've lost your saltiness, in other words, you don't really bring any flavor to the table. You don't really bring any preservation to the table. You don't cleanse anything. You just look just like the rest of the world. There's no difference. Then you are not even, you are of no use, it says. Not even any good for the manure pile, it says. Wow. So therefore, what salt does in a manure pile breaks it down. Okay. It makes it go away fast. So you don't have a long, high, stinky, you know, yeah. breaks it yeah. down and it actually causes the smell to go away. Hmm. So he said, you're not even fit wow. for the manure pile. If you you're can not, say some pretty rough stuff. Staggering. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what he said. That's that verse. Mm -hmm. If you've lost your saltiness, you're not even fit for the manure pile. Ouch. And, and you're useless. That's what he, you're useless, not even fit for the manure pile. And I mean, that's like some harsh stuff and. Right now, the world is at our feet. It really is. They might even be mad at us, but we have an opportunity. Here's the thing. If the church was doing what Jesus said, the church would be the one people come to for their hunger, they, for their drink, mm -hmm. for, their, for their needs. They'd be coming to the church. Can you help us? But because the church over the last 50, 100 years, whatever it's been since the church started saying, the, it's the government's job to do those things. And so now the people aren't coming to the church. They're going to the government. They're counting on the government to take care of them, bring them food. And so right now the church is seeing the results of having not been salt hmm. for a long time. Yeah, that's good. But still, there are there's still the greatest opportunity we've ever had in our lifetime. You know, 9-11 was a great opportunity and people flocked to church to hear what we had to say. Then they faded away because the church wasn't saying anything about Jesus. They weren't saying anything about personal transformation, about your sadness becoming joy, your your sorrow becoming expectation of goodness and, 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 help, and hope. And it wasn't about love in your life. Peter said, when it comes to when, when talking about the end of all things, I strongly urge you to love. Mm. Can you imagine if the church was the salt of the earth? It would be loving. And yet it it it's more a discussion of politics. Yeah. Um, it's more a discussion rights. of uh, rights. It's mm -hmm. a discussion of uh, conspiracies. And, you know, what's going on is the Antichrist here and all that stuff. When really that that's just not our business. Our business is Jesus and him crucified. And if you don't know him, you can. And if you want your life changed, he will change it. And if you give him your life, he, you open your heart. He will come into you and forgive you. And he will be your Lord and Savior. And that I think we have this incredible opportunity to be salt right now. And we're not. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And, you know, nobody hides a light. And in the darkness, a light is so welcome. Mm -hmm. One night, so, this happened to me a couple times in my life where I got off a cruise ship, came home, moonless night, woke up in the middle of the night, not a light in the house, not even a glimmer. And my brain is still in that cruise ship. But I'm really <laughs> in my bedroom. And yeah. I can't, and I'm like, I'm panicked. I'm stuck in the middle of the room and don't know where to go. I don't know which way I'm facing. I mean, it is pitch dark. Can't see your hand. This happened to me more than once in my life. And I, you start reaching out and taking baby steps until you find a wall. And then all of a sudden I realize I'm in my bedroom. Hmm. 
and then you find the wall and you find the switch and you go the switch is next to the door and this door's here so that means a bat and you start finding your way by memory but when you get to a to a light and you turn it on now it's easy to find whatever you want now you know right where you're at your lo you, your location is revealed to you your brain clears up your confusion clears up you know right where to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and and then you wonder how was i so confused because it was pitch dark there was no light yeah and so I went and installed the, the new lights we have in this house all have LED sensors and you can just walk right to the switch. And the darkness only exists because there's no light. There is no such element as darkness. Darkness is simply, by scientific proof, the absence of light. And Jesus says, you're the light. And so any darkness we have in our world today, and if our government is dark, and if these rich people really are doing a conspiracy, then that exists because the light refuses to be on. Mm. That, there's no such thing as darkness. They don't it's have the us. right to bring mm -hmm. darkness to the world. We have the right to bring light wherever we go. And if you want to test this theory of who wins in light and darkness, who's ever going to win, walk into any dark room, Sense the darkness. Like I have a closet with no windows. Go in that to a closet with no windows. It's pitch dark in there in the middle of the night. I don't even care if it's a lit night. It's pitch dark in there. And and you just can't see anything. You turn on the light, and guess what? There's light. It's not you dark can anymore. see everything. <laughs> no fight. And the darkness does not resist. It doesn't win. It never wins. Never once do you turn on the the, the light. Light comes on and the darkness overcomes it and you can't see. Yeah. If the light's on, the darkness is gone and you can see. And so in the world, using the metaphor of you are the light of the world, then Jesus is in you. You go up on the hill and you shine your light. You don't hide it under a basket. The darkness flees. There would be there's only darkness around because the light refuses to shine. Jesus didn't say that. You, he would give you a light. He said, you are a light. Mm. Wow. And so nobody, and he's a light. He gives you his light. You become the light and you go up on a hill and you shine it for all men to see. And if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw all men unto myself. So good. And it's like simplicity that a kindergartner could understand. We are the salt and if we don't be salt, then the world has no flavor. And the world has no purity. The world has no cleansing. And the salt is useless, not even good to break down poop. The <laughs> Real mature, we, Vicky. <laughs> we are the light. We are the light. I didn't expect him to say that. <laughs> we are the light. You are the light. And the darkness only exists because we refuse to be light. Everything in the world that has come, whether whatever you think evil is, school shootings, you know, all of the sins against children, all of the violence against women, all the racism and hate and polarity of political parties, all of these discussions, all of this enmity one for another came from disobedience in the garden. And it came because when Jesus came, he gave us light to shine into the world, but we would not do it oh jerusalem jerusalem how i would have gathered you under my wing as a mother hen gathers her brood but you would not wow. and we are the light of the world but we would not so i'm, I'm hearing that and it's it's a lot of like the the burden and responsibility res resolves or it belongs to christians it right. does. those those of us who know jesus it's not. It doesn't sound like an optional thing that we sh share the light or that we we, we are spread the, the salt, right? Yeah. So, is it optional? Well, no. I, it's not optional because he just said it. You know, it's if you're not salty, you're not even good for the the manure pile. That's mm. pretty staggering um, instructions from Jesus. So. I would just, if you just took that one thing, even out of context about the light, about the salt of the world, we are the salt. It's not optional. Yeah. I mean, it's just not. And, and, you know, Jesus said some staggering, re revelationally challenging 
strong, implicit messages. So as Christians, it's not optional. And it's, it's for us to be preservative and seasoning and, and healthy and, and uh, cleansing and, and be the light of the world and the salt of the uh, world. It's just it's not optional. Yeah. You know, I, I heard a message on, on Matthew 5, the, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And, and it was a lot of the same things like, Hey, this is what salt does. This is what Mm -hmm. salt was for Mm -hmm. in that day. This is how people would have understood it. But the application was so off and I, I heard it and I just shook my head because it was like so close to saying, and we've got a job to do and let's go do it. But the application was, and it's, it's not going to be good for you or it's not going to be fun when you get to heaven and Jesus says you didn't do any of these things right. But he left it there. He said, and you'll still be in heaven, but you just will, you'll have to live eternity without, you know, knowing that you didn't do anything good for Jesus. And I was wow. sitting there and thinking, you're fit to be thrown out, not even on the manure pile. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't seem like it's the same language as I have inherited the kingdom well of God, done. enter into my rest, good and faithful servant. It seems like not good enough for the manure pile isn't going to help me pass the, <laughs> the test. The standard right? is pretty low. You don't leave out. You are useless. Useless. Right. <laughs> oh, that's right. What he said. Well, you are and, useless. Not even, even. Not even good for the manure pile. Yeah, and and the useless. thing said, you know, like, well, useless. That's that's not even the word. Like, that's not that's the worst. That's not nice. That's not too bad. But I'm thinking that's wow. that's the worst thing I'd ever want to be called is useless. By Jesus. By right? Jesus. By Jesus. Exactly. You're so, useless. So I, I have a feeling that a lot of people, a lot of people who have spent their life in, in our, our Christian bubble, Christian subculture, have, have that idea that it's optional and that this, this whole salt and light discussion is for super Christians, oh, right? Wow. For pastors or for missionaries or people who would pick their family off, up and move to a country that ends in Stan, you know, <laughs> something like or that. Africa. But, but for me you know, that's not what I'm called to, or I don't know. Can you speak to that at all? Well, I just, you know, I, I'm probably a, I don't want to say one trick pony cause that's kind of weird, but um, I'll say it anyway. <laughs> but it's like when you read, when you read Jesus in context, I don't know how you come across with that conclusion. I, I don't know how anything and any of it is optional. It's he's, he's strong. His, his admonition is so strong. And I wish he didn't say most of the stuff yeah. he said, but I mean, what Steve said, I, I just had the revelation of what Steve was talking about the church right now in this in this quarantine, post quarantine world we're living in. And there was a point made the other day is like all the churches are demanding this and demanding that our, our constitutional rights, but have we become non essential? Hmm. Um, and yeah. I was like, wow, you know, like what are we doing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Are we essential? Relevant. Are we doing the words of Jesus? Are yeah. we are we salt? Are we the light of the world? Or are we just demanding, you know, our constitutional rights? Mm-hmm. And a lot of, and I'm not speaking to all churches, there's many churches that are so essential. But if you may, if you were may, had made yourself essential before this, feeding the poor, clothing the, the naked, you know, um, doing all the things that Jesus ministries, you'd still be open. And the government would be asking you to continue to be essential. Yeah. So I think that's that's quite being the salt of the of the world is yeah. being doing the Jesus um, the Jesus ministries, mm-hmm. and it's not for super Christians. I I don't know where they get that. I I think again you just take it you take it out of context. If you read it as one application from Matthew through um, John Matthew Mark Luke John, it's it's so relevant and it says the same thing all the way through it, and it's it's not optional. I hope that answers that. Jesus says, my father's going to gather the nations. Yeah. And he's going to separate them, the sheep over here and the goats over there. And he's going to say to the goats, I was hungry and you fed Fed me me not. not. Thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was naked and afraid and you did not help me. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. The... Goats, the, the, he said to him, when did we see that? He said, when you saw the least of these, my brethren, when you did so unto the least of these, my brethren, you did so unto me. He's going to look to the sheep and say, I was hungry and you fed me. 
and he's going to do the same exact list, and then they and he said the same exact thing. They answered the same as the goats. When did we see right. you and take care of you? And he's going to say, when you did so unto the least of these, my brethren, you did so unto me. If the Christian church simply believed that what Jesus just said mm -hmm. was true, that the sheep would go away to eternal life and the goats to eternal punishment, and this is how your heavenly Father will deal with you. This is an absolute promise in Matthew 25, the sheeps and the goats. Okay, it's not optional. And everybody wants to make it something you don't even have to do. But if the church from the beginning of time, beginning of our calendar, had always been the church that where people went to get help, then today in the coronavirus, be where they would still be coming to get help. Mm -hmm. In each crisis we've seen, they'd be running to the church for help and the church would be prepared for it because they would know this is my lot in life. This is what I do. I chose to be a Christian. I chose to be the one that meets the needs of others. Give my yeah. life away. I lay my life down for <clears throat> Jesus, mm -hmm. which looks like laying my life down for the least of these. If the church hadn't abdicated that to the government welfare system, you'd be shocked at how much fruit we'd have. It's, we don't have enough time to talk about Amy Semple McPherson's life, but she fed more people out the back door of Angelus Temple in Los Angeles during the Depression than the government did. More people went to her for their needs, and she Provided. would scrounge up food and make sure everyone that came got food. Mm. And she tirelessly worked that food bank, tirelessly worked those, those ministries to the poor. And, and her story is astronomical. Her fruit spread around the world. The four square gospel spread around the world. First woman to ever own a radio station. She kind of almost invented. Um, not televangelism. Not te radio, radio evangelism, evangelism. you know, uh, because she wanted to preach the gospel Podcast. across the Iron Curtain yeah. into communist countries. And it's just, she was an absolute 19, 18, pioneer. 30? 1930. Yeah, yeah, 1930, something like that. Yeah. And well, um, <laughs> maybe. But it's not optional. Not and it's, optional. it's so clear. You are a goat because you didn't meet the needs of people. You're a sheep because you did. And you're salt if you do these things. And you're not salt if you don't do these things. And if you're not salt, if you're not salty, then you're useless. I mean, these are pretty clear admonitions that I don't know how the world misses or the Christian church. world misses. Yeah. And I and I want so desperately to plead with the churches to read what Jesus said. He said some amazing things that'll spank you. Yeah, you're going to have to get spanked to read Jesus. <laughs> you're going to have to get a few little whoopings and then you're going to change your life around. And pretty soon you're going to start feeling pretty good about your You're life. So happy. You know? Yeah, I follow Jesus. I do what he tells me. It's good. And you're not going to worry that what you lost or what you gave up yeah. for it. You're more going to be celebrating what you gained, which is eternal life. And, and what life Jesus said is come. anyone who get, they, they said to him, we've met, we've left homes and family to follow you. And he said, nobody who left home and families to follow me will fail to receive their reward. I say to you that anyone who gave a cup of water to one of these little ones will not lose their reward in this life. And the next or in, and in the, in the, in this Present. life, many times more than you gave. In the next life, e eternal life. Eternal life, life yeah. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. Eternal. So we started this conversation because I wanted to know, like, what are the markers of looking different than the world? And we went into salt and light. Mm -hmm. And and I've also been thinking about it from a different way. Like, I think there's a lot of people who they see or hear you guys or people like you who are just like, man, wake up every morning. I'm in love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to be salt and be light and they don't feel that mm -hmm. right it's just like uh it's kind of what what jesus would describe in revelation as lukewarm mm -hmm. right and so so how do we how do we change that for somebody who's like oh man i, I just don't know if i actually love jesus that way how do we get them to to actually be go from lukewarm to i want to be salt i want to be light I think I think right now if you're hearing this and you're feeling convicted about that and you're thinking, well, that's me, I think the first thing you do is repent. 
hmm. because you do not want to be one of the goats. I, yeah. That's that kind of drives me, you know. I want to be one of the lambs, the sheep. Um, so, you know, it's never too late. And it's not just for super Christians as I read the New Testament. And, you know, we, we love the whole Bible. You know, the Bible is all God's word, but the New Testament is what, is what we are under, you know, the way. What we live by. Mm-hmm. What we live by. But I would say repent first and just, it says, you know, like bring back uh, how, uh, the joy of my salvation. Go back to when you first believed. When you first found out Jesus is real. I know for me it was so powerful. And I just, I couldn't believe it. I was mm-hmm. just so shocked that no one had told me that this is, this is, I could procure this. I could have this salvation. I could have eternal life. I could know Jesus. And I was so on fire for Jesus. And that's all I, I thought about night and day. And then as life goes on, it kind of you kind of get robbed from that. I think it says, I think Jesus says you've forgotten your first love. You yeah. know, I, I wish that you were hot or hot or cold, but because mm-hmm. you're lukewarm, I'm gonna spew you out of my mouth. Which is again, you don't want to be spewed. Spe- puking out of his mouth is not yeah. a good. Is you know, we're talking about dungs and and poop and and uh, spewing. So the number one thing is repent. I've I've made you know, and you, as you ask the Holy Spirit, I think the Holy Spirit would show you that you become you've been become more uh, enamored with prestige or money or success or your family Mm -hmm. or your life or your selfishness or your boat and it's like you've put those number one Mm -hmm. and the jesus has to be on the throne of your life he has to be number one and then and then your wife or your husband and then your kids and then and then everyone else and then you and and just really going back to the joy of your salvation i would think would be um what and putting jesus back on the throne Mm -hmm. would you agree with that Absolutely. Yeah. I think you have to repent from selfishness. Selfishness. I honestly think that almost everyone that has that experience you described has been taught somewhere in their life to trust in something other than him. That's good. Okay. And and the gratefulness that the under, for me the understanding of the cross is the great where I got my gratefulness. Just the cross alone, that's it, man. And uh, I think that somewhere people got pretty far into Christianity without ever getting a revelation of the cross, without ever coming to the foot of it and understanding it. When we travel, I, I am compelled in all the towns we go to to go in the Catholic Church and go to the foot yeah. of the cross. Like they, those big old yeah. cathedrals and yeah. stuff. Spain, right? Portugal. And there's all these crucifixes. Mm-hmm. And even though the statues of Jesus are a little odd looking <laughs> sometimes, I still, it's just the depiction of an event that I didn't deserve, mm-hmm. and I feel so grateful to it, and I just I I'm always compelled to the the foot of the cross. Yeah, they didn't want people to forget what Jesus has done no. for them, right? Mm-hmm. Right, and I haven't. That's really the truth about me. I haven't, and that's mm-hmm. where. And so I do know people that can't seem to desire to be all in, you know, or desire mm-hmm. for Him to be Lord, a true Lord of their life. And 99 percent of the time, it's it's something that they that they fashioned on their own by putting something before, like mm-hmm. I'll serve. Like in their own heart, they might have said, "I'll serve God after I'm done doing this. Yeah. I'll serve God if here, I get but this. if or if I get this, that's a really yeah. crazy mm-hmm. one." Yeah, and, and it's not that. it's not always like a conscious decision, right? It's, I at least for me, that's that describes a lot of my Christianity. Yeah, and I did start off real real on fire. Yeah, like I blazed through my teen study Bible at fifteen, right? And and, I, uh, and you just kind of grow, you know, it's almost like the analogy of a boat next to the pier. And you're just next to the pier and you're getting on and off the boat and you go to sleep for a while and you're in the middle of the ocean. You don't even know how you got there. Yeah. It's just it's just complacency or and a lot of it, quite honestly, is a teaching of some of the churches that, you know, I there's a there's a minimal I need is required to me. Maybe mm-hmm. tithing is, you know, I, I tithe. So that's all I need. Yeah. You know, the pastor does all the work. I, you know. And it's the te- some of the teachings that have been watered down in the Christian churches in the in the, in the Western Western uh, Church. I think has something to do with it too. Is and I think and I think re- and studies show yourself approved. I've said that before. It's like you need to know what the Bible says. You really need to. You know, you're just taking someone's word for it. But the, the truth is, you need to you need to read it. Mm-hmm. You know, and lots of times we just read it on Sunday mornings from our chair. And then we're done. We checked it off. We've been a church, and we've done what we need to do. Like, and we throw some money in the basket, and we say we're Christians. And I, I think there's it's way more there's way, way more response to that to the to the cross. If you read the words of Jesus, it's everything. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah. So, I want to ask you guys about what it was first like coming to Oroville, because 
we're talking about looking different, being different, having an impact on our communities. And when we, when I hear about you guys first coming to Orville, I hear like crazy stories. Like I know what it's like <laughs> now. And I, I had to take a detour on my way home from lunch because there was cops were raiding somebody's house yeah. on C street. And so I, I had to like back up and go around and that that's today. And so 20 years ago, it was a lot different. So the community here saw you guys like, what are you guys trying to do? And then, and everybody that you had known and, and loved who you told, this is what I'm going to do. They saw you a certain way. So Vicki, what was the community here in Southside? What was their response to you guys coming in and, and what did you guys do? There for are them? two events and I'd like to clarify, you know, we okay. came to Oroville. You said come to Oroville was 29 years ago. Okay. Coming to Southside was 22, 21 to almost 20, okay. 20, 22 years ago. Yeah. What okay. year was it? 97 or 99? We, 98, 98 is when we started 98. the church. Neither right? of There's those. a runny dispute about that. No, there isn't. We think it's 97. Except that I know and they don't. Yeah. We think I, he's wrong. I, but anyway, I, I started the church. I'm not, I wasn't here. I, you I know, it's funny. Excited. I mean, now we had you, you and uh, Sheree over for dinner the other night, and we had a delightful time. However, there was, there was eight of us, right? Mm -hmm. And four have not come through the judicial system and courtesy yeah. of Butte County Jail. And four had. And the story, I was watching <laughs> they you. They all started telling stories yeah. about jail. Watching you and Sherea's eyes, like, you know, because you guys are as uh, pu poly purebreds probably as most people, you, you know, know, like well, a lot, a lot, not as most yeah. people, but, well, but the are. four of us, the four of us were pretty <laughs> clean cut. Ignorant about jail. And life. the other four had come through the life recovery ministry. Correct. And right? they're telling we, stories about, and it was, it was, it was, that's kind of like it was when we first came to Southside. It was like, because I watched you and Sheree as the, these stories were told and your eyes were kind of large. And I didn't yeah. know you could cook a burrito like that. <laughs> I didn't know you could. In jail, yeah. under, in your, jail. under your rear I didn't end. Know, I didn't know how you could light a cigarette. Correct. And you, you were learning all kinds of new things. in jail. So that's how it was when we first started. We were like, our, our eyes were saucers. We had never come to the side of town yeah. and we had lived here for anywhere from seven to eight years because we're not sure exactly. No, um, I, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we we're not sure but anyway um we are and we would go around south side because there is no reason in 1997 or 1998 to go to south side um you would go around there there was no life that we wanted in this area it's not really a through road that you no. needed to go through right there was no there was no response if you call the police in south side you would not get a response hmm. so it was county but the sheriff wouldn't come uh, you would, you, you would, if you were bleeding, you would just basically bleed out in Southside. There was, there was no, there was no, um, law and order. It was just the streets was, a, it was the law, the own law, the law and order. And when we came, um, it was really driving around abandoned cars, stock full of garbage. That was their garbage can. Mm -hmm. Cause they, I don't think anybody paid for, um, garbage men to come down here. Yeah. You would drive around that. There was, um. I remember Anthony being my my youngest was like four or five, um, seven, eight. Okay, he was seven or eight, um, <laughs> and he just holding them really close because as we start, you know, because like the well, first time we went, brought them down, told them this is going to be our church, um, holding them really close because mm -hmm. there had been drive bys. There was girls who were br very broken who were selling themselves for drugs right. you know, up and down, um, offering themselves. There was drug. Um, you and he was Mr. Social. He'd just run out oh, and talk yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah. seven, yeah. eight-year-old. He had to keep him on a le leash. leash. Hmm. Um, yeah. It was, there was, you could, very few houses. I remember there was one on D Street. The, um, what was their names? The Barnes or Sanders House was oh, really Sanders. nice. There was oh, like one, one nice house, house that was really well kept. Mrs. Sanders. <laughs> Mrs. Hmm. Sanders had beautiful lawn. Oh, and um, there was a, you know, so... I cannot describe to you what it looked like. You know, I, we have a picture of this place before and after. And I sh when I do tours, I show people the, the, bu the building, the school transformation. Yeah, the building we're in now is still, if you look on Google Earth, um, the you, street view oh. of this building, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a roof. Really? Yeah. So I have a before I, and after. Because I show I show my family where I live, and I live next <laughs> door to they're this like, building. They're like, come home, come to Colorado, like, oh, please. Hmm, mm. That's where you live. That's your. That's but like there's your actually now. Um, now there's actually the pr there's people moving to Southside. There's um, people that are actually renovating, um, and it, it was always our heart that one day the working poor, the working class would come to Southside. But there there is no description. To people who live in Colorado or yeah. you know or no. Illinois, it's you a know must Urbana, see. you know Elgin, it's yeah. you cannot describe what it looked like. So right. what what were there like? You started, you guys just jumped right in, right? With prayer yeah. walking. Okay, forty prayer days. Walking. Once you started offering stuff to people, 
Uh, I remember you you guys told a story about free garage sales. Yeah. You'd have a garage sale and everything was free. free. You'd come and take something. Yeah. What were people's response to that? They were, they, they were incredulous. They were just they like, were what are you doing? Very happy, very blessed. And they kind of, what would happen is it would spread, word would spread, and then it would become like a feeding frenzy. Oh, okay. You'd see people, people taking way more than just like the, yeah. you know, they, that's what nature, you know, mm -hmm. it's all here. So they'd be wanting to take more than they yeah. could ever use. But we had an abundance. Sometimes it'd be a mountain. Yeah. And the mountain mm -hmm. would be gone in one day. Wow. It was fabulous. Yeah. And then we would do also, um, we do we do uh, uh, barbecues in the park. We give away free hot dogs, and we have mm -hmm. music, and yeah. we would just feed feed the community over and over Jesus again. Jesus in the park. Remember that? Oh, yeah. We'd have um, we just want want to come the opposite spirit. So everything we did was for free. I think we talked about taking kids to the ocean uh, a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. We talked about that for free. Yeah, and that was a trip. Parents wouldn't even. I think you know. I think we told the story. Parents wouldn't even meet us. They would just basically slow down, let the kids jump out. No wow. sleeping bag. No sleeping no, bag. No, no wow. shoes. No We'd have to literally run after them to get to sign a release form. Yeah. And you know, you, you're a father. You would never ever. No. You know, you'd but I saw those things at camp. Yeah. And yeah. Then we found yeah. out they weren't even their parents. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that wasn't my mom. That's my mom's friend. Dropped me off. She yeah. signed the parent form. So we just started. So, so if, you, if you come to if you come to, to our, the father's house now, it's there's a whole campus of houses next door to each other. And on Sunday, Wednesday, when there's church, you see 100 people walking to church. It's become a community where people are walking up and down. Our streets are very nice. We're right, right around the, the church is very nice. Um, but there really is very describable when the Lord brought us to Southside. It, it, it was something that I've never seen in all my years. Uh, you know, I guess it was 40-something back then. But um, it was astounding. Yeah. So it's it's pretty cool to see it now. And Steve, when when you guys started doing stuff, started giving away stuff for free, you decided I'm going to move my family into this area. Did you have any any blowback from Christian friends or, or family that were thinking like, well, that's that's too salty, or that's that's just for super Christians? No, actually, when we would go back to Sacramento, and they'd say, Hey, where'd you go? We said, Well, the Lord told us to move, so we moved, mm -hmm. and. Um, they would be very impressed by that. They'd say, man, I wish I could be like that. Yeah. And they, they'd be uh, impressed, and they would praise us. But um, Oroville, um, Back in there, there was two events. We moved to Oroville, and I had to set up a business, right? I didn't have a ministry. I didn't mm -hmm. know what God sent me here for. In fact, what are we doing here? So it really was led to just focus on business, house-building business. Yeah. And it was what, we, what happened was I didn't like Oroville growing up. I didn't want to come here, and I told Vicky the last place I want to raise our kids is Oroville. And then the Lord said, move to Oroville, so we moved to Oroville. And we were stunned. We loved Oroville immediately. Hmm. We went to the first, we moved in what, September, October? October, early, late September, early October, somewhere there is when we moved in in 91. 91. And we went to the school Christmas pageant in the State Theater downtown. Our daughter was in fifth grade. Okay. And out walks Mary and Joseph and they're singing Noel first Noel and um, come let us adore him and me and Vicky are looking at each other like are we we're not in Kansas anymore man California? there's still there's yeah, Christmas still in, in Oroville yeah they still have Christmas in the public school program well it didn't last long it was gone right away but yeah a couple of years later it was gone but our first impression of Oroville is we loved it and everyone we met was just so salt nice. to the earth just mm -hmm. awesome people so we really fell in love with Oroville, and we, we bragged about Oroville immediately. Everywhere we would say, we love Oroville. People did not love but, Oroville. Right, but then when the Lord's, you know, the, the our, our association with the Four Square Church in Oroville was really negative. There was a pastor there who was very undermining. He was not very mm -hmm. righteous. He was he, he was going the wrong way, right? And uh, things to, we just ended up being the, he, he manipulated people, and we we looked bad everywhere we went. So we had to leave, and um, the Lord's. That's kind of not too long later is when the Lord said, "I want you to start the Father's House." And so when we started the Father's House, again, it wasn't going to be in Southside. Yeah. Then when we, it became evident it was when He cleared, clearly let us know Southside. That's when the culture shock. That's when see okay. we had I had I yeah. never even driven through Southside. There was no reason to go here. You go around it. There's there's ways around it every yeah. which way, but you know to go anywhere. So there's no reason to drive through this neighborhood. And 
when I came here, I was stunned, man. I couldn't believe it. The piles of garbage and the cars Vicky described and yep. all that stuff. And the filth of living, uh, just uh, dysfunction. So when the Lord said moving here, again, Steve, two days earlier, would have been appalled. Yeah. But I wasn't because once he told me, now I know his will and I'm happy. And so I was very happy to do what he wanted me to do. And when we found the Elgin Street property, we were walking in a prayer walk and a young, fifth, she was probably 15 then, year old girl stops and says, I feel something. And I looked and sure enough, I felt it too. And it was the Lord telling us to buy this property. Hmm. So I bought it by the end of the day. And it's where the dining hall is. Wow. I found out later the there was an extra building, lot. Yeah. Built it as a church. The whole story about the money sacrifice of mm -hmm. our was building that there. And so really, we didn't really have any. Um, even my parents weren't even upset that we moved the grandkids away from them. But yeah. but uh, I think to answer your question, when Steve and I started the Father's House, there was blowback from the Church of Oroville. Oh, the Church of Oroville. They were, yeah. it was, you know, and I don't want to indict, you know, we've since, they've, you know, most of them have moved on or have passed away, but it was very difficult because it's like, Steve's a, who do you think you are being a contractor who just starts a church? Yeah. And then back then, um, there wasn't very many churches that were outside of their the walls of their congregation being yeah. essential so when we decided to be a church outside the walls it caused a lot of problems like they thought we were super christians or they're making making them look bad yeah. so Working we got yeah. steve heretical something like yeah that, steve right? got a lot steve got a lot of blowback from um that and uh, was that? many 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 years until probably operation orville mm -hmm. until it then it changed and the lord brought a whole bunch of new people to orville and we are, I think we're pretty loved in the city now. Mm -hmm. And with all, we, you know, we have a relationship with pastors in Oroville. But back then, for probably most of, 15, uh, probably most of 15 years, it was not, yeah, it was not widely accepted that we were mm -hmm. accepted. Agreed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, that's why I was was trying to think of like there's, there's this looking different. There's a price to looking yeah, different. Price. Right? There's, there's a, a price. there's a price for the people you're trying to reach. Today um, in our class, Steve said, you want to pastor a church, you want to start a ministry, you're going to have to love these people, and you define love as selfishness. Selflessness. But, uh, selflessness. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's a yeah. big... Yeah, that's right? a big that's a big, yeah, that's a big uh, <laughs> So love is selflessness. Correct. You're going to have to love these people, and they're not going to love you back that way, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Not, I mean, not for a really long time. Long time. And, uh, and so we're going to have to look different if we want to be salt and light. We're going that's to good. be different to the people we're reaching and we're going to be look different from a lot of people who who claim to be christians claim to be followers of jesus but are are not salt and light themselves That's good um to put it bluntly mm -hmm. um and so i just i kind of like to get that perspective mm -hmm. right that are we going back to the words of jesus are we doing what he's it's good he's telling us to do always getting that check and uh, i was gonna leave it on like how do we get there how do we get there for people listening who who want to be on fire? And I, but I think you guys hit that. You talked about it's it's learning that selflessness, yep. right? Mm -hmm. That Christianity is not about me. And then Vicky, you said once you you hear that, it's about repenting, mm -hmm. right? Repenting and saying I actually want to focus on what Jesus did for me. Yeah. And I want to to learn how to give back. And that's when being salt, being light starts happening and i think also um to make sure you read you know we're a broken record but read matthew mark luke and john yeah just and read them in context and uh you know there might be a forgiveness of pastors that you've had you know a lot of times pastors have not always been of great character or of great fruit or they just maybe they have you know they're, they're they have some pastors have like bents that they like you know name it claim it or mm -hmm. or um prosperity message and um, that's just like it's single focus. So you want to you want to repent and forgive them and uh, read Je words of Jesus, the red letters. Cool. Yep. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it's it. Fun. I, I think I learn something new every time I sit that's down awesome. with you guys. So well, at least we get an hour together with you every week, it's, huh? It is good. Yeah. yeah. People probably think I I finagled that in the, in the finagled. last week. I've had dinner at your house oh, and yeah. sat down for two podcasts with That's you. So it's awesome. Feel, it's been I feel great. Pretty lucky. So I'm glad. I Thanks, love guys. you, Steve. I hope your finger gets better, but I know it's not going to keep you from doing anything. God created my body for my <laughs> finger to get better. Okay.
Okay, there you go. So it's a done deal, man. He it's could go happen. into. He could just speak. It ain't, it ain't a better message. today, but it's getting better. You could do a body a message right now by the body, right? That's if you have a right. finger right that's off, almost right. got cut off, your body was and you're still, wonderfully made. You're to still going to be preaching tonight. on live stream tonight. Yeah. So yeah, tonight, I'll be there tonight. So, right. so let's go. Yeah, I will. This episode's going to drop on Monday, so I'll put the the links for where you can find those broadcasts um, at changeorville.org and on YouTube and everything. And if you want to share this podcast with your friends, anybody you think wants to hear conversations, it's uncommonpodcast.com. So Love it. We will we'll share that out there, and we'll talk to you guys again next week. God bless week. you. Have a great week. All right, man. Thanks, guys.